Anyone who hasn't been paying attention to the indie game scene this year is stupid. There, I said it. Now don't get me wrong, Dad of War and Far Cry 5 and all of the other AAA games slated for this year have been exciting and definitely worth playing, but the sheer wealth of smaller games coming this way and that in 2018 has been thrilling to see. The latest game in my holy crap the indie scene is spectacular sweepstakes is FAR, Lone Sales. Developed by Akamotive and published by Mixed Vision in May of this year, FAR is the tale of a kid and the steam-driven train mobile that he loves. The simplest way to describe this game is that it's something of a combination of subsets FTL and Playdeads Inside. You roll through a post-apocalyptic wasteland, diligently driving a steampunk locomotive while occasionally hopping out to solve puzzles and clear roadblocks. There's a level of fun simplicity to the puzzles, and the mechanics for operating your vehicle require a sort of steady diligence that keeps you busy without leaving you frustrated or flustered. Actually, my favorite part of the game was figuring out how to drive the damn thing in the first place, because the game doesn't really show you all that much about how to do it, and I found myself constantly surprised at little things that I could do to build up speed or blow off steam, quite literally. The landscapes you cruise through are beautiful and varied. You'll find yourself speeding through deserts, urban wastelands, snow, and ash on your way to a final destination, whatever that destination happens to be. This is accompanied by a beautiful soundtrack that sets the mood perfectly. Everything about the atmosphere that Akamotive have created with FAR fits together wonderfully. The story, what little story there is, is kind of fascinating in the sense that you can piece it together bit by bit in the same way that you could with games like Inside. If I had anything to complain about with FAR, it would have to do with the game's length. I finished it out in a couple of hours, and while there are some achievements to unlock that require multiple playthroughs, there wasn't a ton in the way of replay value for any but the most hardcore fans. On the other hand, I'm not sure how much of a complaint that is. As I said, the puzzles are fun, and I rarely found myself altogether too stuck on them, and the process of driving your train requires a constant eye, if not a slavish mechanical devotion, but maybe two hours is just the right amount of time for a game like this one. If there had been a lot of other mechanics or just things to do in FAR, another few hours might have been acceptable. The game is $15, however, and ultimately it's really up to you as to whether or not that price tag is fair for two hours of fun. I didn't regret my time with FAR in the least, however. It's an exciting game set in a lush, melancholy world. If you're intrigued by the idea of powering a train through a post-apocalyptic steampunk world, though, you're definitely going to need to give this one a look. Hey, buddy, don't sink a little drinky. Daddy, get sad and blue. Sneak a little drinky, snickety-doo. Sneak a little drinky past you. Sneak a little drinky, snickety-doo. Sneak a little drinky past you.